Last part of the end times, or excuse me, latter times, last days. Go with me to Second Timothy, please. I'm not saying this for any accolades. I'm really not. I hope it helps you a little bit as we go through this to understand what the last days and latter times for a believer are. Uh, we are not to get caught up in Matthew 24 and Joel 2 and Amos and, you know, uh, all this wild stuff going on with famines and pestilence earthquake. I don't believe the Lord just shuts the lights out. I believe there's twilight, like there's daybreak. There's that transition. And no, we're not transitioning here in church today, figuring out what gender we are. The, the Lord does go from one to another with what seemingly appears to be some sort of transitional phase. Will you see some of the things from a, just a, 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 a gray look, a, a hazy look? Sure. But the Antichrist is not here. And I'm going to keep saying it. He's not here because I'm still here. Yeah. And if you believe in the eternal security that God has given to us as New Testament believers by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know you form the body of Christ. And our head one day is going to come in the clouds and take the body up out of here. Yeah. All those dead in Christ before us, and the alive which, we, uh, which are alive and remain. And we're out of here. Yeah. We're out of here, man. I like that a lot. But there's some things going on in our time, and like I said before, as we get situated up here, if this was happening and wrote about by the Holy Ghost 2,000 years ago, what do you think it's like now? The Bible said this present evil world in 1 John 5. He said that the whole world, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the present evil world is Galatians chapter 1. That's my fault for misquoting that because somebody might be listening. I shouldn't be misquoting the word of God because he's listening. But over 1 John 5, it's this, it says this, uh, that the whole world lieth in wickedness. If that was the case back then, what do you think it's going to get before we get out of here? But again, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the way saved people conduct themselves. And I do want you to finish strong. And I do want you to have a good example and a good account of the judgment seat of Christ. But you're not going to get it by studying the earthquakes yeah. and triple six. Yeah. Wild stuff, man. The Bible says this. Pick it up with me in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 10. We left off last week looking at verse number 9, how the Lord said to let them grow together, and the Lord will handle that. And we took it out of the parable. I understand that doctrine where it is in Matthew 13. But look how the gear shifts just a, a little bit about the negative first nine verses. Verse 10 says this, but thou... That's his son Timothy in the faith, has fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. Very quickly, and I'm not, uh, we're going to pray because I, I know you, you, you need to sit, but did you count how many of those there were there? Doctrine, manner of life, purpose, three, six, patience, persecutions. There's nine of them. How many fruit of the Spirit are there? You know how you counteract the foolishness that's going on in the first few verses? Look the Bible goes on to say, persecutions and afflictions, verse 11, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, where persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And, and no, I didn't get that from the preachers down at the Jubilee, so if you look online, that's a fresh bit of bread from heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you believe that. Yeah, okay. Verse number 12. The Bible says this, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall work, uh, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given, even the ones I don't like, the ones I don't obey. All Scripture, the ones that are in Exodus and Chronicles that would make a billy goat puke, 
All Scripture is given by inspiration to God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Thank you again, Father, for the morning. Thank you again for your love, mercy, and grace towards us. Thank you for sending your only begotten Son to the cross of Calvary to shed that perfect, sinless blood for somebody like me, Father. Knowing the past, present, and the future, knowing everything in your foreknowledge, and yet you still came down here as a fetus, an infant, a young child, all the way up to adulthood and willingly went to the cross, knowing what you would know about us. Thank you for that. It's the grace and mercy of Almighty God, Father. Thank you for the great salvation we enjoy. Thank you for our great Savior, without whom we would have nothing or anything. We pray your blessing upon our time together now in the next few moments. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I mentioned briefly at the beginning, while the world is losing its mind and what's even more sad, the quote-unquote Christian world, and if some of you tuned in, you've got an idea of what a Christian is from the King James Bible in uh, <laughs> that particular uh, Thursday morning. But I use the word Christian in general, and I, I refer to saved people in that, but you can be saved and not a Christian. Let me make that very clear. Uh, the word Christian occurs three times in the King James Bible. It's Acts 11.26, Acts 26.28, and 1 Peter 4.16. If you're not engaged in discipling others and training others and teaching others to grow in the Lord, you're not a Christian. You may be saved, but you're not acting like or behaving like a Christ one. If you do not publicly witness and open your mouth for Jesus Christ in front of others, that would be Acts 26, 28, where Paul is in front of Agrippa, you're not a Christian. You're saved, but you're not a Christ one. If you do not suffer for well-doing, if you do not suffer at the hand of the Father because that's the way He's forming you and conforming to the image of His Son, if you do not suffer the right way for your Savior, you are not a Christian. If you suffer because you did 85 and a 35, that's not toiling for Jesus. So you have a chance to win. So you, this is what you probably figure. I'm suffering for Jesus because I'm getting a $250 ticket, and I'll give him a track so I can knock out two of those three things that make me a Christian in one, you know, one simple thing. That was funny, man, right there. I, don't, I got pulled over by a trooper in August. I have a testimony to give you guys. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying to you is that the Christian world, and I'm using that very, I mean, so loosely, you could, I'm probably going to fall over right now. But the Christian world is even looking to all the signs, wonders, and miracles in the heavens and the clouds. And did you see that cloud out there? It was shaped like a finger. He must be coming back. No, you just took some LSD. You're messed up. Or you got some bad mushrooms from the cow poop you were looking through out, out in Stafford. I mean, it just, it just came to mind. I just, it's, it's, it's a blessing. But they're out there, and I know they are. And, <laughs> that's it, man. I know. No, we're not rednecks in New England. We're... Uh, we're dung kickers. It's different, man. Well, there's a, I'm not going to use the NIV word, but that's what we are in New Hampshire. That's what we were, man. That's what we refer to. We're not red, no, the rednecks, that, no, no, that's, that, that's not down there. We leave them down there, man. But when you get into this whole thing, you're looking, the Christian world's looking for, you know, weird things to appear. It's, we've read in the last couple weeks, that's not what I'm looking forward to before my Savior comes for me in the clouds. You're looking for the way that saved people are behaving in heart and how they're behaving in word and deed and how they're just cold and just, just getting out of it and departing from the faith and people that knew how to rightly divide, people who read their Bible, who once used to witness, they're just, you don't find them anywhere. People that used to give them missions and pray through the prayer list and, and all that stuff. And they're, where, where are they at? Did they lose their salvation? No, they just got cold in their heart somehow, some way. And that coldness led to unfaithfulness, which led to them getting out of the faith. And it's sad to see. It's not funny. I don't, I don't, I don't join that stuff. But that's what I look at. I don't go on the street when somebody comes to me and says, hey, the Lord's coming, you know. My first response to them was, you might die today. Yeah. What good would it be if the Lord came, but you died first and went to hell? Or what happens if you happen to be saved and said that to me, and the Lord's coming, and he doesn't come for another 20 years? What are you going to do in the next 20 years? Before you sing that in the street till when he comes. You're just going to sit around. You know, you know what? Let's get all the dried goods we can. Get our generator. You know, let's use propane because it never goes bad. You know, let's get ready. No, man. We're supposed to pick it up a notch. If you knew you had to go test for something, wouldn't you study a little bit harder? Uh, I think, was it Paul or you guys? You went for the police test? 
Yeah, I mean, do you like running? No, I But you knew the test was coming, correct? Yeah. Did you start running a little bit so you get ready for the test? Yeah. That's why do we wait to the last minute to yeah. cram? We all do that. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it myself. But if you see this stuff occurring in Laodicea, you ought to start cramming for a book test at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. You ought to get ready for the test that's coming where you stand in front of your Savior. Don't get distracted by what's going on. Uh, Tuesday's election day. Is that correct? I hear that stuff. Red or blue or purple or mauve or whatever. I don't care if you vote or don't vote, man. Do, whatever you, do what you want to do. Like you think your vote has anything to do with what God's going to do according to Romans 13.1. My vote got my guy in the... This isn't even my father's world. You know whose world this is? Yeah, underneath God's auspices. Did you ever think maybe the devil put your guy in office? To get you a little more lazy because you got a conservative white Republican in there? So you can just go back and sit on your laurels for the next three or four years and not do anything because everything's going to be good. Maybe we ought to get another devil in the house or maybe the Senate should go to the devil just to maybe make Christians pray a little bit more. Yeah. Get out of the world so much and looking at it. Oh, whoever wins the next election, that's going to... God never looks at that. Never got, you didn't see any of that stuff in our passages for 1 Timothy 4 and 2 Timothy 3. So I want to I want to wrap it up this week and take a look at that. That was, all, that was all just entryway stuff to get you into the Word of God here. Look at verse number 10 with me. I, 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 don't, I do not want to come across as negative, but three quarters of the gospel message is negative. Thank God for the one quarter part that is positive. That's the salvation of mankind. But you do need to preach negativity, but you can't preach negativity without giving them the remedy. So you see how these verses go, and then all of a sudden, you know what Paul says? Take a look at my life for the Savior. You see all that crazy stuff playing out, and men lovers their own selves, and boasters, and proud, and unthankful, and disobedience, and parents. You see all that, all this? Would you just take a look at me and my investment in your life? If you, Timothy, if you've ever learned anything about me, have you watched the way I love my Savior? Have you watched the way I've gone at it while you're at my side? You know this is more than me than just a passing fancy. I'm not just doing this because I have to do it. No, God saved me. It's more than a blessing to get involved in the work that he's called me to. But I want you to take a look at some things with me this morning about that, what he says in some positive remedy in medicine. Verse number 10 says this, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering charity, and patience. That's pretty cool. I'm not a patient person. You should have seen. Paul is like, Paul is all calm. They say like he was reading his Bible in public. He's like, it's going to be all right. It was, it was weird. It was, it was like, you know, I was like up on the mountain with Mahatma Gandhi or, or Buddha or something. He's like, Dave's going to be all right. And I wasn't freaking out. He knows. He probably recorded it to put up on YouTube. But I was just like, man, we got a flight to catch in two hours. And how's the Lord going to do this? And the Lord's going, well, why don't you ask me? Yeah. Now, if you didn't make it, what happens if you didn't make it? What's the big deal? I get freaked out even as a guy that's read the Bible through literally Psalms and Pro 300 times. And you still get freaked out. You know why? Because it's so easy to go back to the flesh real quick. It, patience, stuff like that. But you know how you get rid of the angst and the things happening in those first eight, nine verses? You live a spirit-filled life with the qualities of Jesus Christ coming through your life. And some of those things are not pleasant. Patience. Charity. <laughs> all, those, <laughs> all those fun things that happen right there. Go with me to Galatians chapter 5, please. Galatians chapter number 5. I know we'll hit this a little bit tonight, but give them a little preview of coming attractions so you can lose your ticket to the theater tonight and not get in. Galatians chapter 5. The Bible says this in verse number 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. That's a good remedy. It starts off right off the bat in verse number 10 from our text in 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Paul says, you know what? You can look at all those other people. You can look at the folks that are departing from the faith. You can look at the people that are unthankful. You can look at the people that are giving heed to seducing spirits or doctrine of devils. Or you can find a good man who's following the Lord to follow him. Yeah. I don't follow any man. Be followers of me as I am. Don't we claim and don't we believe, and it's rightfully so, don't we follow a man that God saved and God gave the Holy Ghost inspiration for Romans and finally? Don't you follow a man as long as he follows who? Jesus Christ. 
Uh, Dave, have we gone through on Sunday nights looking at how you can have confidence in another brother as long as that confidence is in the Lord and that man is in the Lord and that man's walking with the Lord? You can put confidence in men. But what happens is we get overconfident in men, so when the men fall, we fall with them. That's the caveat you've got to be very careful about. But don't tell me you don't. don't are, are you, you know, now, we work at Collins Aerospace because we couldn't find anything else to do with our life, Mike. We had to go work at Collins Aerospace. We get paid twice a month, correct? Mike, leave now. <laughs> no, but I mean, honestly, we get paid, salary gets paid twice a month, 24 pay period. I have confidence when I look in my bank because I have direct deposit, I have direct, and you don't anymore because I'm taking your PIN number, <laughs> but, but I, have con I have confidence in that, that company, which is run by a bunch of dodos, and they were extinct a long time ago. I mean, there's probably some smart people, but they can't tie their shoes, let's face it. And, and how we make money, I don't know, Mike, but we make just, we're ripping people off, man, it's awesome. But I mean, we, we, but I have confidence that on those two times a month, the money's gonna be there. So don't tell me you don't put confidence in things. You know what Paul says right off the bat? He goes, you know what, find somebody good you can latch yourself onto and follow him as long as he follows Christ. And if he falls out of the race, follow somebody else you can follow. That's fine. Folks, we don't make it through this life without helping one another. And that's coming from the most lone rangerous, if that's even a word, lone rangerous, maverickest person you could ever find in your life. And I know you got it in you too. You're a maverick, man. You're going to be the little show pony off in the corner just showing everybody how wonderful you are. And you don't need no help, but we do need one another. That's not weird coming from me after all these years, man. But you learn after years, it just peels you back that you don't make it on your own. First of all, you don't make it without the Savior. You don't make it without the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't make it without the Bible. But you don't make it without the prayers of other saints around you. You don't, it doesn't work that way, man. So it's good to have confidence in one another. So Paul says right after he goes, with all this stuff going wild and brothers and sisters falling out of the race and everything going awry and, and men making a shipwreck of their lives and losing their testimony for Christ, and they, you know, find somebody that has not done that and latch on to them because it'll help you finish your race strong. That's why this is not meant to be a bummer. It's been a bummer the last couple of weeks because it's, it stinks seeing your brethren fall by the wayside. It stinks seeing this. But the, you know what I have confidence? The Lord told me this is the way it's going to go. I, I, this is what he said, so I'm on board with it. But uh, you know what? Find somebody you can trust, man. I look forward to Thursday nights with Guido. That sounds so weird. But I, we, we look forward to go teach and, and see what the Lord had for, 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 for the, the guys. But also just to see, it's good to see another brother. He's up there in Massachusetts laboring up there. He calls me, you know, 17 years period. He's like, hey, I need some help. Hey, I need some help, man. You know, it's, you can't quite do it with the oil pouring over the phone like that. But so you go do it. I look forward to that. I look forward to the street preaching besides myself. I've done it for years by myself. It's good. The Lord's always there. He always is. And you're going to see it in the passage. But you know what? It's good when you have a brother or two out there. Talk about the things of Christ with. Witness to people. Those are things that you can latch on. It helps you get through those tough things that are in the first nine verses. It'll help you get through the, as the days for a believer seem to get bleak, they're not getting bleak. They're getting brighter because Christ is coming back for us. And didn't you say that 2,000 years ago? Yeah, I know exactly the way you are, man. This ain't for you then. It's for the ones that actually want to do something before he does come back. And we'll all see at the judgment seat of Christ, and we'll work it out then. Book of the Bible says to me in verse, verse number 11, Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, where persecutions I endured, but out of them all, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Verse number 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil man seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I want to I show you something neat. Go to Acts chapter number 13, please. Acts 13. I will not labor long in these verses, but I want to show you. He mentioned three places, did he not? Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, right? Show you something neat, what's going on there. Acts chapter 13, look at verse number 14 for the sake of time. Now, there's a couple of Antiochs in your Bible. There's the Antioch, the traditional Antioch, where the first called Christians, and then there's Antioch and Pisidia. I believe this is what he's referring to when you look at what happens here. Look at verse 14 with me, folks. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rules of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, men, uh, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye there fear God, Give audience. So 
this is going to start out like a great old-fashioned revival meeting. They read, most, they read the Old Testament, and somebody in the group says this, anybody want to preach? Anybody want to get up and say something about what was just read? That's what preaching is. Oh, i got to come up with three points in a poem, and it's got to be all alliterative. and all. I'm like, I mean, Dr. Walker did something on Wednesday night. He went through, I'm, I'm serious. If you, I don't know if you listen to Dr. Walker. He went through, I'm not, I'm not lying. Probably, he mentioned 12 to 16 alliterations from like one verse in Ab- uh, about Abraham being a faith, uh, Abraham's servant, Eliezer, being faithful. I'm going, is there something wrong with you? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not saying there's wrong with alliteration and, and, and all that stuff, but you know what? If God has the reading of the Word of God, you should all be to stand up and preach something out of it without having to think you've got to come up with some form and function to please people. That'll take the heat off you young guys come January when I get you guys back on the pulpit for Sunday school. That's just a pre, well, young people and older <laughs> Jurassic Park type of dudes. But when we get in January, you know what? I have to impress them. No, you don't. Get up and say what God would have you to say. Get up and give to the people. And if, it's, if it falls on ears, the hearer is wrong for that. Get up and preach the book. Well, that's where they're at right now. This sounds like it's going to be great. If you read this passage, Paul is basically doing what Stephen did. Men and brethren. Well, I I wonder where he learned that from. Who's holding the clothes when Stephen gets killed? Read the words of 13 and 22 of Acts, and they sound exactly what Stephen preached. Well, he learned from example. But the point being is here, the word of God was read. Somebody stood up and said, can anybody preach this passage to us? Now, you think, what a great revival. Popcorn preaching on a Sunday night. There's no popcorn in the hat. It's just subjects, man, that you can pick out and preach from. Now, look what happens here. You say, what's this got to do with what he just said over in 2 Timothy? Look what the Bible says to me over in verse 44 of the same chapter. Acts 13, look at 44. They're still in the town. They're still there. And it's actually, things are working out pretty cool. And the next Sabbath day, verse 44, came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Wouldn't you like to have the whole city here? You're saying, just like, nah, man, I'm out in the country. I want one person. I want one person, man, my bicycle, and uh, some Tiffy Taffy, and Jen, and I'm good, man. No, you got the whole city here, man, coming to hear the word of God. Well, you'd think, this is phenomenal. I've got everybody, I've got everybody right where I'd like them to have for the first time ever. I can preach, this is phenomenal. Look at the Bible, goes on the same, verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Now you know what he's talking about. What did he say over in 2 Timothy 3? But evil men shall do what? And all that live godly. you got to preach when you don't want to, when opposition comes against you. you still got to live for Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter that people are being disobedient to parents and unthankful and unholy and truce breakers and incontinent and fierce and all that. What are you going to do, saved person? What are you going to do, child of God? Are you going to find somebody you can latch on to that get on their coattails and learn from them? Somebody that's fallen Christ, can you do that? Can you humble yourself to do that? Uh, can you stand up even when things appear to be going good and you've got a great opportunity, but then opposition comes against you? That's what we're facing now, folks. Well, it's, it's the queer and the trans movement. No, it's just flat out folks that don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. They're cold as a stinking graveyard at 2 in the morning. Are you still going to go out and preach? Uh, Brother Jonathan sent me a text yesterday. He said, uh, we're street preaching. What is it? Still preaching? We're, Number one, if you know what that means, is the big styrofoam finger that's not a thumbs up. That's what people like to give us. Like that, you're in your car screaming at me yeah. as you go by. Just like you say, I don't hear you with my window up. Well, I don't hear you with your window up, flipping me the bird. But I'm like thinking to myself, you're flipping. That's all you have to say is you're flipping the finger off. What are you going to do, quit? <gasps> Karen, <laughs> they flipped me off. And I'm thinking to myself, she does all the time underneath this. <laughs> That's a joke. That's, I'm not trying to be vulgar or plain, But I'm thinking to myself, we quit over it, nothing. Right, right. Somebody flipped this off. <gasps> I'm never witnessed it again. This is hard. You ever read what Paul went through, man? This is hard. Somebody flipped me off. A little girl with multicolored hair, a flannel shirt, jeans, and, and Timberlands says, I don't believe in God. <laughs> and I'm never, you're never going to go out again? What's wrong with you? Paul said, 
Yea, the all live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer first. Timothy, you remember, uh, let me tell you a story about when I was at uh, Iconium or Antioch. Let me tell you about uh, Antioch. Let me tell you about the great revival the day I had to preach in front of everybody and the whole city came out and all these people got up and started screaming and contradicting me while I was preaching. Best time of my life. Best time of my life, man. I loved it. Can't wait for the next one. Let's go on to the next one. I want to take a quick look at uh, Iconium. Look at Iconium. It's the uh, 108th element on your periodic table. Iconium. It's right next to kryptonite, Superman, friends. Don't act all holy out there. 14.1 says this. It came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided. In part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when, they were as an, and when there was an assault made both of the Jews and also the Jew, uh, of the Gentiles, and also the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that would lieth round about, and there they preached the gospel. Another area where, oh, let's go, this is going to be great, man, we're me. Hey, at least half of us are listening to us. And then they rouse up everybody and said, you know what, you better get out of here, we're going to kill you. Now you say, well, they're chickens, they ran away. No, maybe they're just using some godly wisdom, being wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and saying, you know what, you want us here, hear us here, we'll shake the dust off and move to another town. But they're fleeing to where? Did you see where they're going from Iconia to? Did you see that in verse number six? Oh, let's see what happens at Lystra. Now remember, this is what Tim, uh, Timothy's hearing from the man that raised him and how to deal with end times and last times and latter days in the church age. And, and, and Timothy, you're my young preacher at Ephesus, and when, when things go away, you're going to have to deal with Alexander the coppersmith, and you're going to have to deal with greatest Diana of the... Where's he pastoring? In Ephesus, where greatest Diana of the Ephesians... Paul's saying, you know what, all that stuff in the previous verses you've got to be aware about, but I'm talking about you and what you need to do to get through these latter times and last days. So you don't fall out. So you don't depart from the faith. So you don't KO. So you don't become part of the, the, the scrap heap of Christian soldiers. God must be tired of that, man. Looking over and seeing his kids in a waste pile. He must just sit down and go, you've got to be kidding me. All I've done for you. And he, of all the people that can say of all I've done for you, God can say that. He's the one that has the right to say, of all I've done for you. When you get one, one look at that lake of fire, you'll go, thank you, for at least the first million years. Look what the Bible says with me about Lystra in the later part of the chapter of Acts 14 while you're right here. Now just bear with me, verse number 19. The Bible says this in 1419. And there came thither certain Jews from, Icon uh, from Antioch and Iconium. <laughs> They're following them around. Antioch, Iconium, and now they're here. Enemies are always going to follow the word of God around. Well, I got rid of that one. Well, here comes another lion. Timothy, don't worry about it. The Lord will stand by you. They're, folks, your enemies of the gospel are never going away. But the problem why you don't have any enemies is because you don't open your mouth for Christ. Yeah. You should have some, I keep saying it, you should have some good old-fashioned enemies for Jesus Christ. Not because you're a fool. I've got plenty of those, and they're wrong. That's the wrong kind of enemy to have. You ought to have some enemies for Jesus Christ. When you name the name of Christ in a good, compassionate, holy, kind, biblical way, there are people, some people who go, Pfft, I don't want to talk around him about naked women and drinking all that stuff. Good! But if that kind of like messes with you where you're like, nah, you know, I uh I want to win her for Christ. Let me change my speech and all that. You're, you're part of the ones that are getting ready to depart from the faith, buddy. You're getting close, man. Closer than you think. Well, look what the Bible goes on to say about these folks at Iconium uh, that pers uh, pursued them. To Anic uh, I Iconium, verse 19, who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, <laughs> drew him out. Want to be in the ministry? Drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel of that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra to Iconium and Antioch. <laughs> the same place as Paul just warned Timothy that Paul got his rocks, his rocks brained out. Good job backing talk words this morning. Got his brains rocked out, got 
got destroyed by... Let me ask you a question. What was Paul in the flesh? A Gentile? His former countrymen going after him now because he changed teams for Jesus Christ. And he goes right back to the same place and says, Timothy, i got to warn you, man. Um, friends are going to become foes, and boy, they're not, going to, they're not going to like you for Jesus Christ. But you know what? Don't quit. Look what the Bible goes on to say here. It says in uh, verse 21, when they had preached the gospel of that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to, conti to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. You're not, folks, I'm trying to say this as, as best I can, is that you're not going to get through this life for Jesus Christ without taking some bumps and bruises for the Savior. You can't, I'm, I keep saying it, I know you think I sound like a broken record, but I've been through it in my own life, and I know, I know some of you have in your own. You can't keep all your family members and keep Jesus Christ. You can't keep all your friends and all your compadres and all your buddies and have Jesus Christ. You can't keep all your saved buddies and saved family for Jesus Christ. You say, well, what? It's going to wear you down, and you're going to join their team, even though if they're saved, they're on, we're on the, the Lord's side. You're going to join that team of departing from the faith. It does affect you, man. Don't, did you struggle with any thoughts this morning already? Are you struggling with thoughts right now? See the number on the bottom of the screen? Send in your $25 and we'll help you. <laughs> if you're struggling right now with that, what do you think it's going to be like down the road? What do you think it's, I'm, what do you think it's going to be like when you link up with people who don't even, that don't even think like that book and you're trying to think like that book? Maybe, many of you probably read this morning trying to get your heart and your mind right, just get some of the filth out of here, and they're not doing that. And then you go back and link up with them, and guess what? They pull you down to their level. You never pull them up. You want to pull them up, but it doesn't happen that way. And Paul's saying here, Timothy, you know what? With all the stuff going on, you're going to get persecutions and afflictions because I went through them, the Lord went through them, but cheer up. Godly people suffer persecution for the right reason. And the Lord will be right there with you. I'm going to show you a couple more things about this persecution thing, then we'll move on. I mean, does anybody like persecution? You've got to be a nut. You can only do it in the Lord. It's the only way you can do it, man. Uh, we sang that song from our Lily of the Valley. Uh, you probably heard me snicker on that verse. I have from all, all the idols from my heart are torn. I have all for him forsaken. That's a rough one, man. It's so doctrinally right, I hate it. You torn all your idols out of your heart? You've forsaken everything for him? I'm not, see, the first thing you think of, my money, my car, my house. The first thing you think about, oh, I forsake my worldly dress. Now, how about the way you think? How about your bitterness and your unforgiveness and all those things going on through your heart and your mind? Have you forsaken those idols? Nah, I like to keep those. I have a special room for my Buddha and my, my Mal Malcham and Milcom. I have a special room for those idols because those are mine. He can't have those. Yeah, man. Go, I, I don't, persecution is part of the Christian life. You say, well, that's, that's stupid. Go to Acts 9. Acts 9, would you agree with me that Paul is our apostle? I, I think that's... I think that's some, that's some sound Bible doctrine right there, man. That doesn't mean we don't go to Peter and we don't go to James, but that's not, not what we're saying at all. We're not Paul only. We are hyper burp, but we're not Paul only. <laughs> but you do look at it through the lens of Romans finally, but look, but look at the commission the Lord gave to our apostle. Verse 15 says this of Acts 9, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. This is the Lord speaking to Ananias about Paul, who has been blinded after his conversion. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. Awesome. And kings, Agrippa, wonderful. And the children of Israel, okay, got to go talk to my kinsmen. That's pretty cool. Get to talk to my family about the Lord. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. How many people know that's part of Paul's commission? How many people omit that when they talk about Paul's commission? Oh, he's the apostle of the Gentiles. 100% couldn't agree more. But he's also the kings, right? In Philippians, he says he ministered to Caesar's household, right? Uh, he also goes and witnesses the, the nation of Israel. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. They might be saved, Romans 10.1. You, you, can't, you can't ever read through the book of Acts and all that when the Paul comes on the scene that he never had a burden for his people in the flesh. But what about that last part? Oh, uh, and, and by the way, Paul, uh, Ananias, excuse me, can you relay this message to Paul for me? He's going to get through all that preaching and all that church planning, but he's going to get one extra bonus. He's going to get the bonus ball in Lotto. 
He's going to get to suffer for me. Now, I'm talking to 2022 saved people. What are, you going, what are you going to do with that, man? Well, I'm just going to avoid it. You won't avoid it when you see him. I don't know what the level of suffering is. We always look at the martyrs, and that's good stuff to read. Maybe your suffering is just putting down you every day a little bit more. You say, that's stupid. We're supposed to do it anyway. I don't know. Maybe it's a bigger fight for some of you than it is for others. I don't know. Maybe it's letting go of that one thing you want to hold on to, like that high place as we preached about a few, few, few weeks ago. Maybe it's that one thing that God's dealt with you about that you won't give up, and God says, just give it up, man. We, we always think suffering is being boiled in oil and pulled asunder and all those things. No, it might, there's different levels of suffering. should be ready for it. should be ready for it. Put on the Word of God. Look with me over to Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter 1, please. Philippians chapter number 1. Look what the Bible says with me in verse number 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you may stand in one spirit, with one mind, striving together, for the faith of the gospel. And nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye see in me, the afflictions and persecutions, all stuff at Iconia Lystra uh, over in uh, 2 Timothy. And now here to be in me. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, please. Did you know that it's not just enough to believe on God? Yes, praise the Lord. That's for your eternal salvation. But did you see what he, the Lord snuck in there? Oh, you, you got to suffer for me too. Like your apostle was given the same commission. I, this is not pleasant. I don't like preaching it. I don't like to get into it because I know that this is going to come down the road in my life. Uh, it'll, it'll come. It'll come in your life. And you're thinking right now, well, what suffering is he going to give me? What, what terrible things God is going to bring in my life? It might not be anything. It might be through the preaching of the Word of God, and he just takes a sword and does some surgery on you. He says, why don't you get that thing right? M maybe it is being in prison for Christ. I, I, I'd have to say this probably in America, not likely. But we're going to suffer for him. I, I, I think, and I, I keep going back to it because... You, you can't hang around everybody, folks. That doesn't mean you go live in a cave. You're talking to a guy that's on the street with thousands of people for years and years and years. You can't live in a cave. But you, you've also got to be careful who you chum around with, particularly safe people. You know, you can go to some safe people's Facebooks and Instagrams and find some of the most wicked, vile, ungodly stuff. And don't I, don't I don't have Facebook. I don't search it. If you have it, praise God. I don't care. But I know. I just know. Because Paul and Melissa tell me, because they log in and check it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I know that saved people are putting some of the most filthy, wretched, godless stuff on there. But then they'll tack a Bible verse at the bottom of it. Yeah. You, I just, I, I, honestly, if it was right... I could choke the life out of you. I'd like to grab you and say, what are you doing? Maybe that's what you've got to give up this morning. I don't know, man. You're going to suffer for him, whether it's in America or in Indonesia or in Westfield, Mass., or in Vernon, Connecticut, or wherever you are. If you're living the life God wants you to live, you're going to suffer for him. That makes, didn't, what, what was Agrippa's biggest thing when he said, thou almost persuades me to be a Christian? What was his big thing? Do you guys remember? Who's in front of him? Shackled, bound up. And Agrippa's thinking, I'm a king, man. If that's what it takes to be a Christian, I'd rather stay in my silk robes and my silk pajamas and have prime rib every night. That's what you say, well, that's Agrippa. We don't know if he got saved or not. I'm talking to safe folks, man. If you're safe, you gotta, you got to bear now, man, because you're going to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to have that mindset, man. 
if our, if our Savior did it and our Apostle did it, you read, you read over Philippians, we're going to go through it. It's not enough to believe, but to suffer for his sake. Look at the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 1. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our Timoth Timotheus, look, gee, I want... Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? It said, Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Paul had to send Timothy, his preacher, and said, guys at Thessalonica, don't fall out of the race when the afflictions and persecutions come. Don't tap out when it gets tough. Don't tap out when it gets rough. Stick to it. I mean, you, you folks that you know, lift weights, Paulie, if, you, if people, people lift weights, you work out, uh, don't you feel like quitting sometimes when your arms are shaking and your legs are quivering? You're on a treadmill and you want to run another mile, another couple sprints, and your legs are like, isn't it easy just to say, Stop. That's what saved people do. Stop. No more. I'm fatigued. I'm worn out. Timothy sent to the Thessalonians. This is the people that get the rapture. This is the people that get the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4. And Paul has to send Timothy to say this to him. You know what? Go down there, see our brethren, comfort them, establish them, help them out, and don't let these afflictions move you. In other words, you have to kind of know what you're getting into when you get saved. You don't know that when you get saved. You just want to get out of hell. But as you grow a little bit, you realize, wow, this is a little different than just getting out of hell. Thank God for that. But there's a little more to the Christian life than just getting out of hell. That's the foundation. I didn't get saved here to preach the Word of God. I didn't get saved here to start tithing. I got saved because I didn't want to burn forever. Real selfish motive. You should be selfish when it comes to your soul and not go to hell and trust Jesus Christ. But after that, you realize, wow, more to the saved life, the Christian life, than just being saved. And Paul's trying to break that down for his preacher, uh, his, his, his preacher boy, with, with people, you know, uh, uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils and forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats and, and unthankful. And he's saying, you know what, Timothy, this is going to happen to you like it happened to me. Find a good man you can trust. Find somebody that's faithful, latch on to them, steal your mind that if you live godly for Christ, persecution are going to come, affliction, that's just part of the turf. And let's go on a little bit more and back over to 2 Timothy. We've got a couple more here. Back in 2 Timothy 3, look with me in verse 14, please. Verse 14 says this, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I like that word continue. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of. Just give me two of these. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians 5. Give me two of these. I've got a bunch of them, but I want to, I want to give you at least a couple. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You'd think, what a, what a stupid word that is, continue. But yet, how many don't Continue. They start, but they don't continue. Uh, come January 1st, I'm going to start losing weight. Uh, come January 3rd, I'm not going to start losing weight. I'm going to stop. They don't continue. I'm going to read my Bible through in one year. How many of you quit when it's March? You say, well, that, that's so stupid. It sounds, it sounds childish. It is childish. Just continue on. I can't go any further. You can't. Jesus Christ can you can't in your flesh go on any further. But you continue on because of the Savior. Look what the Bible says to me over in 1 Thessalonians 5. Did I tell you that? 5.21, the Bible says this, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Hold fast. Hold on. We sing a song called Hold the Fort. The Lord is coming. I want to hold on, but I don't just want to hold on. I want to continue in it. I want, I want to be working in the field. I want to be laboring for my Savior when He comes back. Look at the Bible says to me, 2 Timothy 1, verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Hold on, continue. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, please.
Hebrews 7, look at verse 23 with me. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, Jesus Christ, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. I'm glad Jesus Christ continues on for me. Aren't you glad he doesn't stop hearing your prayers? Aren't you glad he doesn't stop with eternal security? Aren't you glad he doesn't continue showing you grace all through your life and mercy and kindness? Aren't you glad that he continues on? Aren't you glad that right now at the right hand of the Father you have a priest, a high priest that continueth forever? You know what he says? Because I continueth forever, you continue on. Don't quit, man. Don't tap out. Persecution has come. Evil men are going to wax. Seducers are going to wax worse and worse. Folks, it's not going to accelerate before we get out of here. It's going to decline, including in the church. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Well, you know, I mean, Guido and Kathleen, um, they drive uh, French green bean and beets. That's what we refer to them now, a.k.a. That's your new name written down, Glory. Beets, Favita, and French. Yeah, those are. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's one, one word or two. Yeah. But they drive from Massachusetts. Brother James Lindsay, when he comes, Brother Steve, you drive from Agawam. That's not an easy drive, man. It's 35, 40 minutes. No matter how easy you make it, it's still 35, 40 minutes. Go one way. That's a ways to drive. We know we, we drove to Plainville for, for years, man. We drove from Plainville, uh, to Plainville, from Chicopee, Mass., as I told you before, in a Ford Escort with two kids and almost like no AC. If you know what a baby blue Escort and me sitting in it, you should be laughing right now. That's the Antichrist vehicle next to the Prius, man. No, that's the false prophet. The false prophet has the Prius. The Antichrist has the blue escort. But you know what? It was, it was 49. I know this exactly. It was 49.7 miles to the door with two kids. You know why? Because you go. You continue on doing what you're supposed to do. Why don't, what's he going to preach this morning? I don't know. Just show up. Is he going to make a fool of himself? Are we going to have fun? Is it going to be heavy? Is it going to be light? I don't know. Just continue on. Well, I don't like where this is going this morning. Continue on. Hold fast. You know how people are not holding fast in our circles? You should have heard some of the stories, man. We were just talking. We were, we were gossiping, but people tapping out, save people tapping out, saying no, uh, save people believing, uh, save people believing Jesus Christ is not God. People that have graduated from some schools now all of a sudden don't believe Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're in the middle of it, folks. Before the Lord comes back, continue on. Timothy, hold fast. They're going to come at you. There's going to be unbelieving Jews. There's going to be believing people. They're going to come at you. You hold fast and you continue. Do you like hearing about churches shutting down? Is there some macabre sense of uh, grat gratification you get when you hear that a Bible-believing church closes? I don't, well, they're, they're not our stripe, brother. I've never understood what that thing means anyway. I know by his stripes we are healed. I understand they may not believe like us, but if they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and they believe the King James Bible, I'll give them a pat on the back, man. Say, good job, man. See ya. You ain't going to change their doctrine. They're not going to change ours, but it's better than them being. But when you hear something like that closed there, you're like, oh, good, they were wrong anyway. Oh, good, they were horrible. Now, if you're completely apostate, then that's good. God shuts you down. But these churches that are ministering to 5, 10, 15, 20 people, and they shut down, we don't need less of that, folks. You know, continue on, man. Well, we only have five people here. You should have heard some of the stories. There's a guy sitting down there, you know, Dr. Mike Wheeler. That guy sat on Jim Lintz for, brother, Dr. Lintz for years. James Lintz is one of the greatest preachers America has ever had. He died in 2005, brother Mike Wheeler, long story short. Mike Wheeler went through his doctrine and all stuff. You know how many pa people be pastors? Like 10. And he's a good preacher and a Bible teacher. He pastors 10 people. Another guy gets up, I, I pastor 12. And I work a second job. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're running about uh, 15 people. I'm doing this to take heart and take heart with me. I don't care how many people show up. I'm continuing on for Jesus Christ. What happens when your kids just show up? What are, you gonna, are you continuing on because you want to be recognized by the world or for Jesus Christ? Are you going to hold fast because... He held fast and holds fast even now? Or are you just going to tap out? Look at the Shemitahs. Did you see the circles around Jupiter? The Lord's coming. No, stupid. Look at the way saved people are behaving. 
and who cares? You gonna continue on or not? You know, what, you know what's sad? I think some of you have never even started. So you can't continue. I would exhort you, start. Start. So you can continue. Look what the Bible goes on to say. There's a bunch of stuff. We ain't going again because it's not the time to do it. Verse, uh, look at verse 15 with me. A couple comments about 15, uh, 15 through, through 17, where we are done. Go back to 2 Timothy with me if you could. The Bible says this, and for that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God as prophet for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I like this, man. Our salvation comes from God. Our scriptures come from God. And our sanctification comes from God. See, Paulie, I did. I picked up three S's when I was down there. They, can't, they got in my suitcase. Another S on the way back. I can't think of an S for an airplane. No, I'll have to think of that, man. Shit. Airship. Yeah, airship. Thank you. See? You, uh, you always defer to the genie, us. Yes. I mean, folks, this is, this, this is great assurance here. The script, our salvation is from God. The scriptures are from God. And our sanctification. We, folks, we all love doctrine. We do. We love doctrine. But that's the first thing in those scriptures right there. And I'll emphasize that to the day I go home to glory. But what about the reproof? What about the correction? And it's like, do you like that when God gives that to you on a plate served up cold or hot? Do you like the fact when, oh, that's really good teaching me. I love that doctrine. But do you like the reproof that comes after it? Do you like the correction that comes with it? Do you like the instruction? No, I just like the doctrine. Be careful, man. You know why we have all those, those verses in your lap in that King James Bible? It's to make you as a saved person perfect. I know you're already complete in Him. I know that. But you're not perfect yet. You don't act every day and every minute and every hour like Jesus Christ, and neither do I. And that book helps you accomplish that. Nobody's perfect. How many verses did we go over like last year about being perfect? It's in there. And it's not any ever time sinless. But I'm complete in Christ and so aren't you. But man, there's a lot of stuff in my life that ain't, that ain't right, man. It ain't perfect. That's, see, I've been down south and said ain't again, man. This is horrible. This is horrible, man. There's a lot of things that are not right in my life. That Bible, that Bible gets that out of my life, gets the cobwebs and the, the stinking mole holes out of my life, spiritually speaking, for Jesus Christ. You know why? Because I'm not a finished product on the outside. My heart's not a finished product. It will be one day, but why wait till the end? Let those scriptures wash over you and change you so you can be the son of God, the daughter of God that he wants you to be. You see, now you're saying, well, this is boring this morning. It was not very good, and you know, you're not, you're not feeling yourself, and blah, 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 and all that stuff. No, I think it actually is just exactly what God needs to be said right now. I'm not saying it because, I'm just saying it's just the way it's going. It may be a little flat, may not, whatever you might feel our services are like, but this is so practical because we're looking for the big pop in Christianity and the next cool thing and, all that. and you know what no persecutions are coming you're gonna handle it and continue you're gonna hold that book dear you're gonna hold the doctors dear or is someone gonna influence you to tap out and change when the unbelieving people come and the, and the other folks come to dissuade you are you gonna turn away from them? are you gonna find a man that can help you grow in your in, in your in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and stick with him as long as he sticks with Christ there is so much in those eight nine verses we like to focus on what's bad going on well, what about the remedy God just gave you it's going to go back all to what we said a few weeks ago when we started this. Some shall depart from the faith. I don't want to be one of those some. And I don't want you to be one of those some. I really sincerely don't. It'll be your walk with the Lord. You're drawing nigh to the Lord. It'll be that book washing over you, not just for doctrine's sake. Yes, we have that. But reproof correction and instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect through the furnace unto all good works. Paul, I pray for us this morning. Please, if you could. Well, I do want to thank you for your word. Just that we can have the doctrine, but we can take it in practice to apply it to our lives. A little for you, help us not to fall away from the faith that we've been given. Help us to truly examine your word. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 Amen.